I got away from this. Travis will leave us on. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Many. Here. Peel? Here. Monahan? Here. O'Hara? Here. And Brennan and Jones are absent with notice. Here. All right, do we have any motions to approve the agenda? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Any opposed or abstaining? All right. We have a motion to approve the minutes from April 6, 2021. 2021 sorry. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed or abstaining? All right, next vote for a motion to approve the bill submitted for payment. So moved. Second. resolution will keep her on the board when it gets changed over to Sioux Metro Growth Alliance. So really nothing. It's just a structural change for them, but our membership so, partic participation is the same. So our dues being paid up, that's just going to roll over? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. 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 Yes.
last one in this section, we've got first reading of Ordinance 706, Establishment of the Park and Recreation Board. Make a motion to table for the right meeting. Motion to table. Second. Okay. Second. No discussion on the table, so we'll vote. Mine? Yeah. Randall? Yes. Keel? Yes. Anna? Yes. All right. All right, Mr. Horn. You're up. All right. Quick one tonight. All right. <laughs> um, so, March, we did 30 calls, 12 in the city. Um, still hitting about one call a day, so still uh, still busy. Uh, April training for EMS is, uh, I can't remember it got canceled for some reason uh, last month, so they're going to double up and include infectious disease, EMS culture, and safety with that. Um, fire training is going to be event enter search and hose deployment. And then, um, yeah. That's about it. Our pancake fee is going to be eight, or, uh, sorry, May 16th, I believe, on the station. So I think that's all I have. Unless any have any questions. Oh, pretty good. Things going well? Yeah. Very yeah. good. That's good. Plugging away. Plugging away. Yeah. Membership's good. Yep. You can always use some dedicated people, but, you know, we're doing good, so. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Amy, the meeting with the Chamber of Economic Development Report. Okay. Um, my report is in the packet. Um, this one I touched on a couple of things with the Golden Heart sponsorships that goes with down or excuse me, Discover Harper. Um, they were hoping to get six. We have fifteen, so we're excited about that. And we're in placing them all over the community to drive business to different locations. So we're having fun with that. That will be done the week of May 3rd through the 8th. Also, um, continuing to meet with different individuals regarding purchase of land opportunities. Um, met with um, some individuals um, Sunday. Um, so excited to hopefully have them in our community as well. Um, but just continuing to do those opportunities that arise. That's very important. That's good. Questions? <clears throat> All right, thanks, Amy. All right, and David, what is the engineer for us? Good evening, folks. Um, so our, our report's in there, but uh, is there anything that you want particular questions on that you know? Um, so, previous agenda items we have outlined there, but design standards, we've actually started initiating that review already. We've got kind of a, a working document to do, and that's how we kind of mark things up. Um, going through that, then we'll go through that with Craig and staff, and, and review that in great detail before we before we eventually take that forward. Um, CIP updates the rate study, really that's in hold until that waste water feasibility study is complete. Um, project updates, Western Meadows Phase 4 is under construction. Um, that inspection actually started this morning. Um, there was a proof rule out there this morning uh, that we had. There was about eight spots on that that were just a little soft. Um, that there was a different amount of deflection. You can, you can have some deflection throughout the entire thing. It's not like there's zero tolerance there. But when you see some of those spots that show up, we mark those out. And um, if you go by there lately, they've actually dug that up. They're going to put that back in. It's about 18 inches that they scarified. They'll put that back in tomorrow. They'll roll that again, and then we'll inspect that again tomorrow, actually, because they want to keep moving forward and get rocked down. Um, Western Meadows Phase 5 is currently being reviewed right now. Um, most of our comments are, being, are, are compiled right now. We'll give the staff and go over those, and then we'll present those to the developer as well. Um, Max Lake Phase 1 and Phase 2 punch list items remaining. Drew Creek Phase 1 punch list items remaining. Um, and then that Vance Peterson, uh, Peterson, Vance Peterson letter um, has been delivered. GIS, we continue work on the transferring of the actual information and sort of updating that in our actual document as well. Um, so overall, we did go ahead and review Lot 10, Block 2, and Lot 1, Block 3, NAPS Landing Edition for approval. And then we continued our meeting 
um, weekly moving forward. So uh, I do uh, say kudos to Craig for taking a, a long time for showing us around the community um, and just looking at various infrastructure, what's kind of keeping them up at night, you know, what are the things that we think that we can make some improvements on, and then just really some of it, just getting to know the infrastructure in general. So um, really good use of time, I really appreciate that. On the wastewater feasibility study, um, quite a lot of uh, this information you're aware of, but the permitting and Skunk Creek, um, that's been really good information that we've received back from the DNR and feel really good uh, in regards to your guys' timing on that. Um, since the last meeting was with the wastewater treatment technology, we've had a triple point uh, environment presented on the nitrox system, which is an, it would be an upgrade to the existing lagoons. Um, the alpha Laval presented on the SBR, which is an activated sludge treatment plant, um, and it's kind of modular, expandable, um, but that would be potential technology used at a new mechanical uh, water rec facility. And we have kind of our big days, uh, Thursday and Friday, um, where uh, staff will be going with, uh, with a group of us, and we'll be visiting Alta, which is Aeromod, Alta C, which is Lemna, Huxley, which is, oh, do you remember Michael? I want to say SBR, but I'm not sure. No, Huxley is um, Nitrox, DeSoto, I want to say it's SBR. And Kingsley actually will replace them, but it's another shader. So we're going to kind of go on a whirlwind for two days and see a ton of technologies. Um, we really like that. It gives us an opportunity to actually ask direct questions to the operators. What's been working well? What have you not liked? Um, they will actually tell us the truth, <laughs> which, is, which is really good to be able to hear it directly out of their mouth. Of, you know, what would you do different? I think that, that um, that's always good to know for the next one. So. Um, regionalization discussions have been had with Kirks, Humboldt, Wayne, Township, Colton, Lyons, Ellis, and Wall Lake. Wall Lake was the only community to decline for the discussion, um, but then met with Colton on 4, 415 to continue that discussion. And then um, the reason Steve and Mitch on here, the, they're actually meeting with Lyons tonight. So, um, and then we're still reviewing some of the, the stuff on the feasibility of larger producers as well. So, any questions on those particular items? Lance Peterson letter, is that something that you can share with the uh, council? Not yes. necessarily here, but email forward to us or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Perfect. I think you got a copy of that. Yeah, so. it's something we started with then, you yeah. know, last year and then yeah. following up. So, sure. Yep. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, the other thing, uh, after uh, last month's meeting, um, there was a question, a question and a request for uh, community development planning services. Um, I'll go through this a little bit in greater detail. Going through with a, a couple communities on this process, um, really focusing on three main aspects, housing, quality of place, and commercial and industrial development. Um, so this is, in, in a sense, this is really the visioning. Um, it kind of pairs directly, which is nice that we're going through the, the downtown uh, master plan at the same time of the process, because we're going to really look for the community's feedback. Um, so this community plan is something that really targets in those three aspects, where do we think we're at, where do we think we should go, what, what things do we think should be added, um, and really sets that tone for an extended period of time. Think of this as, as almost like a master plan for the entire community, focusing on those three particular topics, and, and really what we think needs to be added to the community. So but really, it's a heavy on community engagement, the only time that this is done well is when that community engagement is a very forefront, forefront process that we're getting the input back from the community and saying, yep, this is exactly what we're, uh, what we're looking for. So that will be a series of actual sessions where we'll get feedback from, from individuals um, through boards and, and different precedent imagery. It's a lot of, hey, these are different things. What, what do you think about Hartford today? Um, and what do you want it to be tomorrow? So uh, we've kind of outlined even a timeline in that. Um, I think it's also great that it does focus a lot on um, on the actual use land use. Uh, that when you talk about those three aspects, they're both very uh, focused on where's the appropriate land use identification and things like that. So um, I think it's a really good exercise for the community to go through and really you know set the tone moving forward. For as well. Do you guys have questions on that, that community plan? I think we most certainly discussed it as 
with with some folks being out that that it made sense to just review it. If you have questions, let let us know. So. No, I mean, I obviously had a chance to go through it, talk through it a little bit. Um, I do like how it matches up with a lot of the different goals and different things we have planned for the community. It matches up pretty well with like our Envision 2025 campaign to be able to know quality of place and some of the housing pieces and, and commercial development and some of that too. So um, I, I, like, I like the focus of it, I like the scope of it. I think that looks good. And yeah, as David mentioned, it's kind of our chance this, this time to ask questions, dig into it. Um, as that precedent we've sent, it's, it's more or less a chance to <coughs> kind of walk through that and not worry about approving it tonight, but really get a chance to clear up anything that you think needs to be covered in there. So, Yeah, so and, and what I would say is we're, um, we focus a, a lot with this. You know, typically, we would have somebody from our kind of our infrastructure team, more on the engineering side, the boring side. Um, then the landscape architecture team would be involved, our architecture team, and really it blends those services together so that we really end up coming away with actual um, visual documents. Uh, I don't, you know, too often when I see, and they, they told us there's a purpose, but like a comprehensive plan, don't, don't think of this as a comprehensive plan where it's heavy on the word doc, it's instead heavy on the visuals um, to really guide that. Um, and if you ever want an example, we're going through the process right now with the city of Orange City, who most certainly has a very distinct um, uh, brand, is what I would say. Um, and, and going through that process has been really fun to go through with them. And really, what we ended up doing with them, instead of a document, is actually a website. And um, we've gotten community feedback through that. You know, some people have you know, not been able to be, be comfortable uh, it's actually in person to sit through those meetings with the group. That's been a, a portal for them to put that information in there. And also just for folks to, to run past ideas, to let them see things and react and, and say, yeah, I, I kind of like this, I don't like this, um, to, but to really guide that vision. Any other questions? One thing I kind of want to point out to you guys, if you notice on the Nicholson Road Improvement, you know, we're going through that uh, FEMA LOMAR process, the FEMA LOMAR process right now, um, to show FEMA that, you know, the work we did in there didn't, you know, disturb the floodplain or whatnot. And before we did the project, they did a CLOMAR, then we do the work, and now we got to follow up with the LOMAR to show the actual work conform to the CLOMAR. Well, we did get a letter um, about a week ago. Stockwell's got a letter. I got a copy. The county got a copy saying that they had concerns that um, the rise that we had shown in the Colmar was more, the actual rise was more than what was shown in the Colmar. And they had concerns about uh, the building structure out there. Well, the building structure they had concerns about was the old barn that we tore down. And so basically, we had a discussion with them saying, that building's not there, it doesn't affect anything. Took pictures, documents, sent elevations, sent a letter back to FEMA. I just got word today that they have accepted all that and they're moving forward with it. So if you hear any issues with that from the county or whatnot, we have worked with FEMA and, and that's corrected. So um, they were worried that it was just a slight rise and that it was enough to affect that building, but that building's not there. So we tore it down with the project. So it doesn't affect anything. So. Wanted to make you guys aware of it. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> All right, else, we'll move to picture part. I'm just going to touch on a few things. Um, for trees, um, we are working on getting a boulevard trees planted on that. And the Arbor Day tree, um, Teresa did get uh, sent an email over to the Humboldt to talk to them about it. They really didn't care if they had a tree over there or not. So. We decided that we're just going to start doing an Arbor Day tree designated for Arbor Day and just start planting our own park systems instead of going over to Humboldt and planting the trees. So, so that all started started out with little pine trees back 20 some years ago. So going over to Humboldt. So, 
So we should have that. Now we'll stay at Hartford with it. Um, water, um, Alan did get his uh, test results back from his water distribution and he did pass that. So he's got one certification to take care of so far. Um, parks, I, if you see in there, what, a couple years ago, um, Teresa called the price that I put together for the resurfacing the tennis court, and that's basically with, like the tile that locked together, and that's about it's plus 60,000 two years ago. So if we decide to do some work on the tennis courts themselves, we might want to look at putting in the budget item for the road or something. But, um, you know how big that is, Craig? How many square feet? I want to say it's um, 100 by 120, something like that. Could we just bust it out and pour it for less than 60,000 bucks? I think 60. Because what, what's going right five bucks, five and a quarter foot? You'd probably want to just cut the 680. 680 is a good deal. Four inch or six? That's six inch, you're right. So we can buy a little cheaper for four inch here when you do it. It's not a parking lot. But. Yeah, the price for concrete's about 130 a yard right now. Yeah, with the six or whatever that Travis mentioned, that includes cost of the concrete. Yeah. yeah. So what did you say it is, 100 by 120? I think that's what it is, yeah. And when you resurface them, it'd be 12,000 feet. Or 12,000. 12,000 square feet. Divided by 80. Mm -hmm. Divided by 80. Well, that'd give you your yards. Yeah, yeah but if you're, if you're just paying by I've got, the yeah. Foot. 72,000 at six bucks. And we do have a guy that. Make a tear on removal, though, if you do that, yep. too. And you got to go and then you don't have, yeah, you'd want to cut inside the fence and bust that. I'll leave the fence alone and just fill it inside. But you still wouldn't have your markings or anything like that. You'd have to, you know, paint those in place. Uh, I'm just, yeah. just curious. It's, they're not cheap. I mean, it's been $60,000 for tiling cheap either. No. About no. a square foot, though. I mean, if you think about it that way, that's about as cheap as you can get for well, foreign. Alan does a really good job of concrete. That's that's what he did before he did our shop floor over there by pretty much by himself. The, the other guys kind of helped him knock it down. He said he'd be pretty much knowledge. by himself. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> just throw him under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just floor by yourself. The guys so don't bring knock, me a cup of coffee, yeah. check on you. They don't knock it down and do one foot pretty much. And they just said, okay, I'll leave you alone. I'll finish it myself. So, <laughs> so he's pretty good at concrete. Yeah, yeah we'd have our cheap labor. So. That's good to know. I know that uh, Gail reached out to me wondering you know, where the process was yeah. at. So we've got some pricing we'll probably look at tonight. So now we have some pricing. Yeah, so it's not going to be. That was two years ago, that price? That was two years ago, yeah. Yeah, we looked into it at budget time. Sure. And that was quote two years ago. And then the, the tile, you know, Put them out. They're gonna have all the lines in them and everything like that. So you want to, if you want to do the whatever ball it is, you put those lines in too, so you can have it all laid out. Maybe more small permanent, you know. So. How big is the tile? They're just rubber and an arrow. I mean, yeah. I have never even seen them. Just, just like a floating floor. Not really. Yeah. Oh. I was standing there. All right. Supposedly, yeah. they do a lot of them, and they did one in some of the Sioux Falls, and I think they did one over in Bill Colton, but I thought it was Del Rapp, two years, two years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. You still have to prep the old one, don't you? You'd still have to go in there and scrape some of that out, grind some of it down, and take the brakes out, and yeah. do a little patch, and then just like smooth it out. Right? Yeah, so you, you don't want to get as level as you can by it. Chipping That's another reason I think if a guy just poured a new one, because by the time you prep that surface buff floor, <laughs> you're still putting it over, you're still putting it on top of junk. Yeah. So, how long has that tennis court been there? Before me, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say in the well, 70s. <laughs> if you mind the 70s. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah. Even if we did it half, but 
We resurfaced it one time, or just re We have one year and half the next, and just five of them. Mm -hmm. I just, that, that tile just sounds like a band aid over a bad floor. Yeah, it's just a way of covering up what you got. I mean, it lasts, it holds the L, smalls one. Well, it, it holds up as long as your base held up. Until yeah. some kid goes and pulls one of the tiles off. Would you, um, I don't know, would you entertain the guy that poured the sidewalk at the sports complex reaching out to you to work out the price? And the city have time to remove what's there? I mean, to Mark's point, what would it actually cost? Yeah, I can get prices. Okay. I'm going to figure out some time. Figure out how much you thought that Alan did it. <laughs> What's the trouble like? Because <laughs> he's going to be there a while. <laughs> um, and then also with parts, I'd like to like I said, thank East River for coming out again and doing the light bulbs. Uh, we replaced uh, just shy of all 26 of them this year. Really, so. um, you will notice that there's some that aren't working. They're still got... Um, some electrical issues, sockets missing, stuff like that. It just, they won't let anybody up in their basket with them, so we have to hire somebody to come in and do them by themselves. So, to get them all working, but they've been, been like that for a few years now, so. Um, no worries. Um, sports complex, uh, trees will be getting planted out there pretty soon. We let a bank, we did that partner with them, so that'll be getting taken care of, and we will be, Getting the depth from the soccer fields and getting them striped here, hopefully by Thursday. So, so it goes. And that's all I have, unless somebody has any questions for me. Uh, just a question on the lamps. We still buy the lamps, right? For the ball field. Yeah. We donate that to. No, no, we do. We buy the bulbs. Yeah. Buy the bulbs. Yeah, lamps. What do those cost? Uh, last ones are 36. We're a long ways away from converting that to LED affordably. Yeah, no, I did some price on that for him. At one time we were paying just about a hundred bucks a ball, but we found a different place to get them from. So. We have changeable LEDs, we use pretty stuff. Yeah, that's a lot cheaper. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Anything else for Craig? All right, good report. Thanks, Craig. Thanks. And move to parent reports. We just got one action in there as well. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add to my report. Um, the action item is I'd like to attend finance officer school out in Pier in June. They didn't have it last year due to COVID, so it's been a couple of years. So I'd like to go. Registration is seventy-five dollars, and then hotel room is one hundred four a night, and I need it for two nights. So. Approval to attend that. Make a motion to send Karen to finance officer school or training or whatever it was. <laughs> what was it called again? <laughs> yeah. no, finance officer school. Finance officer, yeah. After you clean that up, I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion? All in favor? All right. Any opposed or abstain? Thank you, Karen. Move to Teresa's report. Um, my report's in your packet as well. Still looking for some more summer help. Um, I've got about six lifers that I'm interviewing now. I need mean, probably about three more to cover all the shifts. We've got one lifeguard that could double as an assistant manager, otherwise we don't have any other assistant managers. So we need to find an assistant manager as well because Amy can't be there all the hours, all the days. On it. So still looking for them, a couple public works guys, um, one public works, or a couple public works assistants and, and one park rec assistant we're still looking for as well. Um, we continue to advertise through the shop or our Facebook and website. I had Amy, she threw it out on Hartford Happenings today. People like to read that, I guess, so hopefully we'll see. <laughs> they have a comment about it anyway, so hopefully. So we're, we're still trying to look for them, so hopefully we'll, 
We do have dump monitors though now. Um, we've got Vicki Mullen and a backup um, of Russell Oswald that is doing it. So that's all taken care of and we've got that up and going. So. Uh, the city of Sioux Falls increased their, well, they, um, they have an ordinance that is increasing their budget for parks and rec, park and recs, aquatic programs by $250,000. Mm -hmm. I heard they were trying to get better pay to get lifeguards. I guess I heard that they are having some really funny lifeguards. Right, the city is too. They're all struggling. I heard all of And without having them last year, they probably lost a pipeline of people that would have normally progressed. Probably out. shifted to other jobs. Yeah. Right. We did. Um, Karen did send out to our former, um, you know, the one lifeguards last year to let them know it's open. They can apply. And we did have. Well, three of them, I think, reapply, but um, I So I was going to ask you, so how last year, if we had reached out to those people? Yep, yep, maybe mm -hmm. every year she always sends them, lets them know, hey, it's open, here's an application, you know, so, you know, so we did reach out to them, and yeah, like I said, we had some of them mm -hmm. come and reapply, but not them all. So, so we'll continue that search, and if you know of anybody, tell them to apply. <laughs> Um, and just put in there, um, Sheriff's Department, Mike Walsh retired, so there is a new sergeant in charge at Ben and Zika. He actually stopped by here last week, had a nice visit with him, and um, just feel free to reach out to him if you have any concerns or issues or whatnot. Um, definitely wants to keep the relationship with the city and keep working well with us, so seems like a nice guy. Um, kind of hold the or just Following up our census status, just kind of wondering when those numbers will come out. It sounds like it won't be until September until we got them because of COVID last year and how they got behind. They're not going to get the actual numbers out until September, I guess, this year. So usually it's out earlier, but that's what I was just told today on it. And heads up, we're going to be sending out to all residents a pet letter, basically reminding them of the pet regulation. We're having a lot of issues with uh, not licensed pets, running at large, people not putting them on leashes, not picking up after them. But we're getting more and more, as every summer, but it just seems like it's more and more. So we thought we'll just do a blanket letter so if you get questions about them. Um, actually, Jen's working on that now, and we'll probably get them sent out hopefully maybe by next week. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that. I can tell you from going in the house in the theaters, there's a lot of dogs and cats out there. <laughs> well, the average person has probably two. So out of all the households I've been in, which is just about 500, probably 15% don't have any. 15% will have one. The uh, other 70 will have between two and four animals. And oh, we got like 60 so, registered in like the city. <laughs> How many? 60. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so. Maybe they're just busy. So, trying to maybe just remind everybody <laughs> what we're going to so hopefully get back on a little bit. So, I'll let you know that. Um, I too have an action item um, along with the finance officer's school that day before they're having a human resource school. Um, I include that information in your packet. I would like to attend that. That's a fifty dollar registration, and it, they start it in the after, at noon one day and it goes to noon the next day. So I'd be staying overnight one night too, or four. So I'd like to attend that, and then uh, I'll leave, and then Karen will come. It's at the same place. <laughs> Fighting each other on the road. <laughs> Make a motion to send Teresa to the human resource group. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we have old business. We have some cost estimates on the dark part of discussion from last meeting. And I do want to give you, um, I had in your packet an estimate, and me and Craig have kind of fine-tuned it. He actually went out to the one at, at Ellis and um, measured their fence, and he was thinking we'd need a, well, we practice a six-foot fence, thinking one foot underground and then five foot high. 
he went out there and measured, there's only as a four foot, so we thought if we got a five foot pen, which definitely lowers the price, and you know, it's four foot above ground. So the price estimate, the fencing's a, a lot cheaper with Coley, with, you know, reducing the size of the fence. And then we did notice too, we missed, um, we didn't have anything in the first one with any signage, and we'll have to put you know, a few signs out there. So this is an updated cost estimate, all in all, and including bringing water there, you know, having that right away there, um, we estimate the total to be about 36,500, roughly, being there. Um, I did have Craig, we just kind of talked a little bit about what it would take to um, concrete that parking lot out there. That's an actual 17,000, a little over 17,000 more. So that's a significant cost. And I don't know if we want to entertain that doing it now or not or whatnot, but um, like I talked about a little bit earlier, um, we are going to apply for a game fish and parks grant on this. I'm going to put this full estimate in there and hopefully, you know, we might as well try to get whatever we can get. Um, and then Deanna Larson also applied um, last week, it was due for an AARP grant for $20,000. So um, she thought that one, she would hear back on that by June. I'm not sure when we would hear back on Game Fish and Parks. It usually doesn't take too long, so hopefully the summer as well. But, you know, we want to entertain doing this. I think we get those two grants submitted, see what we get back, and then uh, we can move ahead, you know, and if we have to tweak some of the things we do out there, you know, obviously we can, but, you know, um, I think it's not going to be too terribly bad to, to get it up and going. It would be a nice amenity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the recommendation. It has to be a foot underground. That's what they recommend for these dog parks. Six well, inches, they say. Yeah. Just yeah. because you want to have it, you know, when you're on uneven ground, you're going to get some of those gaps and stuff in there. And if you get a dog that starts digging, sure. and you take them on to get that's out. Right. Okay. Well, even if you have to get it half a foot, that gives us a little work. So just a rough count, they counted like 30 some trees. Are we getting trees from the Arbor Foundation or because the thousand for that many trees seemed? We are just looking at some shrubbery. Uh, okay. Just going to Walmart or whatever and picking up some. And just maybe edges, that it yeah, would be a long just bike path there. Up, yeah. To kind of have that barrier between the, you know, gate and the bike path. Um, yeah, the, best. the bigger trees right now, who wouldn't be able to get any more? Um, get, get them through Mike anyway, because he's got a quarter that he buys, and that's all he gets once he's out, he's out. So he might have a few left over, but um, I do have some money for park trees, so we might even look at entertaining some down there. And put them in there. And maybe that'd be a good spot to start a first arbiter tree or something. I don't see there's anything in here that we really kind of take the frisbee golf no. holes out and relocate them. I mean, is that another 500, 600,000? Maybe, I mean, load up the rocks that are there, take them out of there with the skittier payloader, um, pull the posts out. Pretty, pretty easy. Fill some holes in and then, yeah. At the same, they don't have any concrete pads or anything, so it's just pulling the poles and. Yeah. The rocks. <laughs> that's our markers. <laughs> that's our markers. <laughs> we have scorecards we'd have to have reprinted. Nope. <laughs> so I, I assume the city's, the city's Sioux Falls just operates there as open public, regardless where the public's from. And I assume this one would operate the same way. I mean, you, know, you want to have a license, but how do you license Well, but, uh, you know, as, as I'm sitting here looking at it, I'm thinking, you know, is this going to turn into the, you know, leaf drop off? But really, there's no, there's no really cost after the initial cost. So if there's, you know, if there's 30 people from the surrounding community that live outside the city limits, if they're there, I mean, there's no additional cost. But I would think of maybe a little bit of water. Right. But, your beings. <laughs> yeah, but I, I assume it'd just be open to the public at large, whether they're citizens of Hartford or not. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure how you monitoring yeah, that. Yeah, and how would you, 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 how would you, you monitor, wouldn't want to pay for that. Yeah. You know, if you put up something. Yeah, it's like the parks. Yeah. 
that if you have somebody traveling through that wants to let the dog out and run, then they're not going to be licensed to tell them you're going to tell them they can't let their dog run. You know, and, but, I mean, just as long as we know that going in. Right. But yeah. this is, it's going to be, if we build yeah. it, it's going to be a free-for-all. Yeah. yeah. That's the way I see it. It's yeah. just going to be a free-for-all. That's what two balls makes for you. Yeah. They don't monitor and you just bring your dog out and run. Suppose if you could give it just like a, a like our perks we have now. I mean. right. And you also got to be ready. Sioux Falls did have someone get bit last week at dog park. They had two dogs get in a fight, and uh, one was a bulldog, and, or a pit bull, and another one, and the guy went to separate him and got bit by him. A couple of bits, so. Very possible that happens. As long as the state doesn't have any liability. Yep, mm -hmm. that's the whole thing. And we, we just have to make sure we put it on the signage yeah. that we're not liable. And it's user anymore. beware, so. Yeah, they're. Using at their own risk. <laughs> yeah. So you're just recommending that we wait and see uh, what, what money gets received from the grant before we move forward? That, that'd be my recommendation before we move forward or anything, because mm -hmm. we've said you know, we will be submitting the Game Fish and Parks, and we've already submitted the ARP. I say just let's see what we get back from that and then move forward from there. Um, I know we'll. I'm not sure how the AARP grant works because Dan applied for that, but I know like being fish and parks, you really can't start any work until you get either a yay or a nay from them. And otherwise they won't cover anything you've already done. So sure. that's how most all grants work through the state is that uh, you gotta wait to sure. Teresa, have you talked to the insurance company about this? I haven't talked to them this go around, but when we were talking about a dog park last year, I did call and ask them about that. And, and that that's, is what they said is that you have to make sure you, it's clearly marked and signified that you know. Well, but because the thought I just had was I mean we can certainly put up signs that says we're not liable for accidents, but if we do this, we're literally putting it right next right next to a walking path. Right. So I mean, is is there liability if we don't post it on a walking path? that says this walks right past a dog park. You see where I'm going? Oh, I see what you're saying, that if we don't put a sign like Because if something bad really you're happens, if something bad really happens, happens, I could see somebody saying, why were you guys idiots and put it right <laughs> next to a walking path? No, at, at that time, you know, we didn't have a location, so yeah. I know that, I, no, you can certainly run that by them too to make sure. That, that'd be my Tell biggest them where, concern where we're, Looking at putting it, you know, see if there's any other issues or concerns we need to be aware of. Like they like that in Sioux Falls too. I walk past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have a dog, so I don't go. Yeah, yeah. It literally is. Yeah, I like path or I would say the one at Yankton Trails in a park yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah, yep. that's kind of well, they must cover it. I'll double, I'll double check though. I'm yeah. just verified that we have. When you're biking with your five-year-old, she decides to stop and watch the dogs. You gotta make sure you're ready for that. You don't run over <laughs> your five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop the dogs. <laughs> 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 All right. Any other discussion on the dog park? Okay. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the work that went into this, and um, it's good. We got some grants moving, so looks like that's moving in the right direction. That's going to be great. <clears throat> All right, we'll go to, we got a couple of things for new business. Uh, first item on there is the middle of the East Face Billboard number five. I think most of the privilege for East Face number five. I'll second.
in its true planting ways. So therefore, I adjourn the Mayor of the City of Hartford do here on April 30th, 2021 as Arbor Day. And we've also got our Silver Star Banner Day, which um, we're planning May 1st, 2021. Um, we've done this one for several years in a row now as well. And Silver Star Families of America was formed to make sure we remember the blood sacrifice of our wounded and ill by designating, designing and manufacturing a Silver Star Banner flag and, um, and just honoring those that have served in that, that capacity. So I declare um, today's date that May 1st, 2021 would be Silver Star Banner Day. And then our last proclamation is building the safety month, which we've also done for several years, and declare building the safety month for May of 2021. And we're committed to recognizing that our growth and strength depends on the safety and economic value of the homes, buildings, and infrastructure that serve our citizens both in everyday life and in times of natural disaster. So with that, declare. May 2021 as voting safety. Anything else on those proclamations, Teresa? No, just trying to clear them. Just clear on that. Yeah. All right. And Teresa's got in her packet that um, our first again has been um, noticed as Tree City USA. So. That's fantastic. Thank you for all the work that goes into that. Thank you, Craig, for everything you do to keep that going. That's been... Karen, Karen, Karen does all the application. I think you can thank Karen. 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 Well, thank you, Karen. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, I like your penance because you're a finance officer and you print reams and reams of paper. There's a tree. Craig plants on And the only other thing I have under correspondence, I didn't know. Um, comments send out some more information to clarify how appointments happen with the open seats. Within here, I just just want to make sure you guys didn't have any questions regarding that, or if you want it explained a little bit more. Now that we got my apologies for missing that, Karen and Teresa, because at the last meeting I had missed that provision in the ordinance so, or in the statute. So, but you are going to have interesting uh, 2022 election mm -hmm. with uh, six open seats on the council. So. You guys stay in the point of the seat, if they'll all be up at the next meeting. So, Tom, I, I didn't read the email. Okay. So, you want to just give me the sure. cliff notes on it? The, we talked about that, that you weren't vacant. Yeah. Because, but there was a statute that clarified that. It yeah. said if you don't file a petition for an open seat, that is technically vacant. Yeah. Okay. So, the vacancies will be the four. Council seats that didn't have petitions filed. You'll stay in office until you go right down the list, I guess, and fill those with the remaining council members with fill until the replacement is there. So, so if that if that would happen the first meeting in May, would would the two that weren't up for election vote on the third, and then the three vote on the fourth? The fourth? I think the five would vote on the the one. The one, and then. I, I had suggested so would you do would you do it under old business or new business? Be because because really if you do it in new business the the people sitting here shouldn't be voting. Yeah, because that seat would be vacant when you start the new meeting. Right, you got to fill the vacancy. And but old, but and old you serve until the vacancy is filled. So oh, I mean. It, so you do serve. It'd probably be a new business because it'd be the new council then, and and those seats are vacant, so people are holding them until their replacement is offered uh, by the remaining council members. So you can still vote while you hold the seat. Right. I guess. So I'd suggest I don't know if you start with Marco Harris because it's a one-year term, and then just go ward by ward. 
And if it's Mark Monahan's ward, he doesn't vote on the yeah. replacement. But. Sure. So. Clear your Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to that point, I think it brings me to my question is if none of us are appointed, we're simply filling the vacancy in the mayor could at any point between now and the election. It's not a mayoral appointment. It's not. It's the, the remaining council members fill the vacancy. Fill the vacancy. <laughs> so, so now when you say, because when we did this the last time, the remaining, the remaining council members, in my mind, that would be... We had resignations where people were going. But that would be the two that weren't up for election, in my mind. Well, but you still hold your seat until the vacancy's filled. Yeah. Unless you resign and you're gone, then so... So if you're still holding the seat, right. then really it'd be just whoever the six. So I to spell that. It's odd that they didn't spell this out better. Well, you know, the <laughs> patchwork of these statutes since 1939, is when they find holes, they try to plug them, and um, it doesn't always work. This, this was, a, was an amendment from 2014. That's pretty new. It is. Yeah. That's pretty funny. If I missed it, it was hidden back in the top yeah. hour. I didn't have anything to do with Hartford, did it? <laughs> you want to look at the legislative history, you might listen to the uh, committee reports on that in the legislature to see if Hartford was mentioned. But I don't know. I gotta tell you, your colleague Larry though, he didn't miss a beat that night. Nobody knew whether he was telling the truth or not, but boy, it just came it just came out of his mouth. This is what you gotta do. He's just popping it off. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody, nobody said anything different. So. That sounds good. When I get some free time, I'll listen to those finger reports. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. No, I apologize. Yeah, I'm sorry. No. Don't have to die in two seconds. <laughs> All right, that's it for regular agenda items on there. Um, we do have plan moving to executive session. Is that correct, Teresa? Under Yeah. Okay. So, motion to Motion move to executive. Second. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? I think the motion we adjourn. Oh, wait. I rescind my motion. There you go. I make a motion that we have city attorney draft up a purchase agreement to transfer the 24. Five plus or minus acres on the north side of town to the HABF uh, with Burbage plugging the city attorney into the HABF. Do we have a second? Okay, second. I just wanted to make sure you got that all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. All right, any other discussion? Is that clear now, Teresa? Yeah. Sure, we'll clean it up. Okay. We'll vote. Grandma? Yes. Bonaghan? Yeah. O'Hara? Yes. And Keel? Yes. Thank you much, we adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any <laughs> <Be> opposed? <laughs>